Obesity is a vast public health problem and a major risk factor and a disease modifier for asthma in children and adults alike. Obese people have an increased risk of asthma and obese asthmatics have more symptoms, more frequent and more severe exacerbations. They also have a reduced response to asthma medications and a decreased quality of life. The relationship between obesity and asthma is complex and in this program we aim to disentangle that relationship. This is Euphoria News broadcasting from London. Hello and welcome to your foreign news. I'm Dr. David Bull. Obesity is a catastrophic health problem worldwide. In 2022, one in eight people in the world were living with obesity. Adult obesity has more than doubled since 1990 and adolescent obesity has quadrupled. In 2022, 2.5 billion adults aged 18 years and older were overweight. Of these, 890 million were obese. 37 million children under the age of five were overweight and over 390 million children and adolescents aged between five and 19 were overweight. 160 million of them were obese. Now, the current definition of obesity is based on the body mass index, or BMI. If you have a BMI of 25 or over, you are said to be overweight. If your BMI is over 30, then you are deemed to be obese. And if we turn to asthma now, asthma affects more than 300 million people worldwide, including 11.6% of children aged 6 to 7 years. And here in the United Kingdom, over 8 million people, or approximately 12% of the population, have been diagnosed with asthma. It is a massive problem which has a huge impact on the healthcare system. Obesity is now recognised as a major risk factor for asthma, and several longitudinal epidemiological studies show that obesity, or increased adiposity, often precedes incident asthma. Obesity is also associated with increased asthma severity. Well, here to tell us more, I'm thrilled to be joined from Denmark by Professor Rebecca Backer. She is Chief Respiratory Physician at the Department of VNT at Riggs Hospitalet in Copenhagen. She is also a board member of Euphoria and Chair of the Euphoria Asthma Expert Panel. Really good to see you. Um, can I start by asking you about the link between asthma and obesity, and also how obesity contributes to either the development or indeed the severity of asthma. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, talk about obesity and asthma. It's interesting <clears throat> concerning whether there is an association between the two diseases. They often happens at the same time, but that's not a conclusion that it is associated. <clears throat> there have been many studies out there looking at this topic, and um, and there's a meta-analysis uh, two years ago which uh, said that there is a relationship. But the real true relationship, you have to do a follow-up study. And this is done in Australia where they have looked at patients uh, or a population um, where uh, some of them had diseases and some of them had not. And if they looked at those who had not, no diseases as, uh, at screening, they saw that the asthma frequency was double up in those who have developed obesity during this 10 years period. And that's a proof. I mean, becoming obese and developing asthma um, was shown in that study. So I think there is a link between gaining weight, uh, higher inflammatory markers, uh, pushing to the disease in your respiratory system, and you then develop asthma. Now, there is a lot of discussion, particularly here in the United Kingdom, around the use of BMI as a marker of obesity. How useful do you think it is, or are there other metrics that we should be looking at? It's always good to have a easy to use standardized methods like BMI, where you have the height and the weight and you do not need anything else. 
So I support the use of BMI, but of course it could be uh, better to use the waist circumference because there you will have the uh, the shape of the body, not not only the weight and the height, but you also have the shape involved. So some studies have used that one to show whether there is a relationship between that measurement and not BMI. And in the Australian study, they did both. And both of them showed that if you have a more um, weight, uh, if, you have, uh, if you have a higher weight and, and compared to your height, like in BMI, you have a higher risk of developing asthma. And if you have a waist circumference, which is bigger, you also have a bigger risk. Okay, so we're talking about the relationship between asthma and obesity. So the question I then have for you is, do obese patients have less good asthma control and or less good therapeutic responses to recommended asthma therapy? Yeah, that's completely true. You can divide uh, into overweight and obese. And if you look at the overweight patients, they have less good asthma control than the normal weight. But if you look at the obese, it's even worse. So there is a trend of uh, because if you are higher weight, you will have a uh, worse asthma control if you are compared to the normal weight. And, and is that something you will tell your patients? And if so, what advice do you give them? I tell my patient that is, it is a weight loss of 5%, which will give them better asthma control. It's not 10%, it's not 20%, it's not 100%, it's 5%. And most patients can see their way out of 5% weight loss. And uh, another thing which is important when you uh, want to have better asthma control, that is exercise. And that has been shown as well. We have shown it in normal weight and, and the overweight patients that if you do uh, high intensity training three times a week, you will have better asthma control. You can even uh, reduce your inhaled steroids for, for and keeping the, the better asthma control. But there is a new study out there where they looked in obese patients who is having the worst asthma control, gained very good asthma control if they were doing exercise. Some of them, of course, also changed weight lost in weight during the exercise. So a combination of weight loss and training will do the trick. I mean, that's a really positive message, isn't it, for patients? Because they feel they have some sense of control. As you said, 5% seems very tangible. Yeah, I think 5% is something patients can live with, that they should lose in weight. And uh, two to three times of exercise per week is also something they can live with. It's not every day, it's just two to three times. They can do it like um, Monday, Tuesday, and one time in the weekend. So these recommendation is lifestyle changing, but it's also changing the weight and the fitness and the asthma control. Let's now talk about obese patients who have asthma, but are also pregnant. The obesity is something you gain when you are young adult. And uh, pregnancy is also something you gain when you are a young adult. And the combination of these two is uh, making your asthma control even worse. So the, the time in your pregnancy for the obese and asthmatic female is worse than uh, if you were not obese and did not have asthma, for example, and you have a higher preeclampsia situation. And when you give birth, the kid is preterm. So it's smaller than it should be. So having asthma, having obesity, being pregnant is three things which is very difficult to control. You've made it very clear that patients need to lose weight to improve their control of their asthma. But what do you say to patients when they ask you about newer weight loss treatments like Azimpic, for example, a GLP-1 analog? And what's your experience of using it? A very good question and not something I have literature to support. But a weight loss is a weight loss. And the weight loss induced by Ozempic, for example, or one of the other, Vigovi, or one of the other ones, 
is something which is a weight loss. And if we go for 5%, that's certainly something you will gain when you are on this medication. And uh, if the patients are asking me whether they should have these kind of medication, I'm actually supporting it because I go for the weight loss to have gain asthma control. And uh, until other evidence, like uh, other scientific evidence is saying that this weight loss is a different kind of weight loss, you will not have the uh, decrease in inflammation, I will go for it. Mm. And, and in many ways, I mean, I know there, is, there are side effects to using a GLP-1 analogue, but there's also side effects to, ha say, having surgery, isn't there? Yeah, there's a, a Dutch study concerning surgery in obese asthmatics. And the, when you are obese, your ventilation possibilities are reduced because you have a huge, not, a huge uh, amount of fat in your abdomen and the, it's filling up so your thorax are, are smaller and your breathing is less. And when you then uh, have asthma, it's worse. And they have made a study where they did surgery and it actually made the asthma better controlled when you lost weight during surgery. Surgery just had this problem that uh, you will have some uh, side effects of it and lots of side effects of it. So I think the GLP-1 antagonist probably will um, make the surgery be less frequently used. So, so what's your final take-home message to people watching this? What's the one thing you want them to remember? I would say if you are obese or overweight and you have asthma, uh, you will gain better asthma control if you lose in weight and do physical activity three times a week. Uh, you might even be able to reduce the inhaled steroid. And when you are obese, the steroids are working less well because the kind of asthma you have is a different kind of asthma. So if you lose in weight, your steroids will work better. So there's lots of gain by losing in weight. Fantastic advice. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Vibika Backer. Thanks very much. Well, many thanks to my guest, Professor Vibeka Backer, a really fascinating insight into the complex relationship between obesity and asthma and why we need to do everything we can to reduce incidence. Now, don't forget, you can find more details about Euphoria on the euphoria.eu website, where you can also sign up to receive the latest news via email. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Spotify and Facebook. Until next time, goodbye.